if we limit ourselves by obeying some of the scriptures and disobeying some, God will also be limited in fulfilling some of the scriptures and denying us in fulfilling some of the scriptures. The ball is in your court. Let's go to today's message. That book of Jeremiah 32, verse 27. Luke 18, 27. And James 4, verse 2 to 6. But from that Luke 18, 27, you at home, you, you take from Luke 18, from verse 18. To 27. But because of time, we will take, we'll see how we go. But Jeremiah 32, verse 27. I am the Lord, the God of all peoples of the world. Is there anything too hard for me? Are you listening to that? I'm the Lord, the God of heaven. Is there anything hard for me? Read for us that Luke 18.27 from that New King James. Luke 18, verse 27. But he said, the things which are impossible with men are possible with God. Mm. Go to that uh, 19, 20, yes. Verse 19, 20. Luke 18, verse 19. So Jesus said to him, why do you call me good? No one is good but one that is God. Verse 20, you know the commandments, do not commit adultery, do not murder, do not steal, do not bear false witness, honor your father and your mother. Verse 21, and he said, all these things I have kept from my youth. Verse 22, so when Jesus heard these things, he said to him, you, will, you still lack one thing. You still lack one thing. Mm -hmm. Sell all that you have and distribute to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Thank you. Tell a neighbor, are you aware of the things you lack? Ask your neighbor, you are in the church. It is good. Tell a neighbor, say you are in the church. It is good. But do you know the things you lack? Ask your neighbor, do you know the things you lack? Or do you know one thing you lack? Mm. The man in question tells Jesus that I do this, I do that, I do this, I do that. I go to church, I do this, I clean, I do this. But Jesus says you still lack one thing. This shall take us to the title of our message. Stop limiting God. The Lord say, I'm the Lord, God of heaven. Is there anything too hard for me? Jesus said, what is impossible with men? It is possible with God. This means we should stop limiting God. Tell never say stop limiting God. We should stop limiting God. Listen, in your pursuit of many things, you need this, you need that, you need this. In your pursuit of desiring many things, and these things, many of them you are struggling to get. You get some, you don't get some. 
many times we are the one that limit God. Because the Lord says, is there anything too hard for me? Is there anything too hard for me? Those things that are impossible with you, they are possible with God. God's possibilities in our lives rest and lounge in the character of the person praying. Meaning, what is possible for me may not be possible for you. And what is possible for you may not be possible for me, depending on my capacity to believe and obey the scriptures. Our capacity to believe can either increase or decrease depending on how much we feed our soul. We nourish our soul with the word of God and obey it. The Bible says the man who does them is the man who receives them. Meaning, the man who obeys the scriptures is the man who receives his promises. Because God's promises are in his word. So we should be careful that we pray for things that are not promised in the scriptures. Tell never say we need to be careful that we pray for things that are not promised in the scriptures. Because God's promises are in his word. In life, we have a part. In eternity, God has a part. Our part in life is asking. God's part is giving or doing. Asking belongs to us. Doing or giving belongs to God. Matthew 7, verse 7. Matthew 7, verse 7. Keep on asking, and you will receive what you ask for. Keep on seeking, and you will find. Keep on knocking, and the door will be opened to you. That is it. We knock, but we don't open the door. We ask, but we don't give ourselves. It is God that gives. We seek, and God makes us find. We don't find. We seek and God makes us find. We keep knocking and God is the one who opens the door. The only thing that limits God and conditions him not to answer our prayer is found in the character of the person praying. Tell a neighbor, say, the only thing that limits God and conditions him not to answer our prayer is found in the character of the person praying. James 4, verse 2 to 6. Let's hear. James 4, verse 2. You want what you don't have, so you skim and kill to get it. You are jealous of what others have, but you can't get it. So you fight and wage war to take it away from them. Yet you, don't, yet you don't have what you want because you don't ask God for it. Verse 3. And even when you ask, you don't get it 
because your motives are all wrong. Are you listening to that? The only thing that limits God and conditions him not to answer our prayer is found in the character of the person praying. You keep asking, you don't ask. But when you ask also, you find asking yourself wrong things, wrong motives. So I want to ask you, what are you asking God for? What is the purpose of what you are asking? Because many things we have are not God-given. We gave ourselves. That is why we struggle even to maintain them. The projects we do, the contracts we do, if you give yourself a project, a contract, you will maintain it. Because God does not maintain what he did not start. Many things we have, we gave ourselves. That is why we keep struggling hard to keep them. Because we gave ourselves. God did not give us. Because God does not maintain what he did not start. But if God gives you something, God will, will, will protect it. God will keep it for you because he gave it. He maintained what he gave. He protect what he gave. When you see somebody with project, hey, this contract day, it's not everybody God gave. Some they give themselves. You give yourself, you maintain it yourself. God is not involved. The trouble that will come, God is not involved. You will be involved. You gave yourself. That is the difference. You don't start a church and you say, God, come. God start a church and he maintain it. He supports you. He start, don't start a business and you say, God, come. If you don't want to end with failure in life, include God in all your decision making. Including Involve him. Partner with him. Let's go. You involve him, Lord. That's... When we pray, we are asking. We look for this, we look for that, we look for this. When we pray, listen. To those who sound or appears to be genuine, serious about what they are looking for. When you pray, for God to answer your prayer, there should be no difference between your lifestyle and your prayer. When you pray, ask God for something, they should know, for him to answer that prayer, there should never be a difference between how you live your life every day and your prayer. Many times we pray good prayers, sweet words, but our lifestyle are not sweet. The way we conduct our life is not sweet. It means there is a difference between your lifestyle and your prayer. God cannot answer such. You just came from a nightclub, you are here today, you want God to answer your prayer. You just went to consult prostitute, you have problems, you are here for God to answer. There should not be a difference between your lifestyle and your prayer. If God has to answer it, there should be no difference. We have made Christianity to be a very difficult something. We, human beings, have made it to be that way. God is not difficult. God is very simple. It's not a difficult God. It's very simple. We keep asking ourselves about 
Moses. How did Moses part the sea? And the children of Israel pass on dry ground. We keep asking ourselves about Joshua. How did Joshua stop the sun and the moon? How did he cause the sun? How did Joshua cause the sun and the moon to stand still? Through divine means of prayer, so that the Israelite may win their battle, their victory that very same day, not tomorrow. He had to pray that the sun should just stop because it's going to evening. Mm, we must stop there. These people have to, they have to finish all their enemies before it's set, and the sun stood. How did he do that? How did Elijah pray to stop the rain for three and a half years? And after that, he prayed after that, that it should rain and it rained. What type of prayer were they using? Ask your neighbor, what type of prayer were they using? Dangerous prayers. What are they then? It was simple. Very simple. Lord, give us victory. It's about to set. Let the sun stood still. This they have to. That is so simple. Let the sun stood still. Lord, let it stood still. That is Joshua. Let it. There was nothing difficult or dangerous terminology like prayer. No, Lord, we need victory. Let it happen today, not tomorrow. Let the sun stood. With Moses by the sea, he just said, Lord, we don't have a place. We don't have a, the mountain. These people are on the mountain top. We have no other way to escape. Lord, make a way. Lord, make a way. Is that a difficult prayer? God said, okay, stretch your, you are asking me to make a way. Stretch your rod towards the sea. And the strong wind came. And it just moved. Just like when you put water in a plate, you say, the breath of God blew on the sea. Because he was asking, Lord, they are going to kill us. Make a way, make a way. Since God is a God who makes way where there is no way, he made a way. There was nothing dangerous about those prayers. They were just simple prayers. The same with Elijah. Lord, let it not rain until I pray again and ask for rain. That is all. Let it not rain so that they may know that you have sent me, you, the most high, and I'm saving you. Let it not rain. Yes, that's all. In the same way, when I go for prayer, somebody, man of God, this and everything, I just stand in the name of Jesus. Is there any dangerous thing I'm doing there? Be healed. Be healed. Is there any dangerous thing I'm doing there? Nothing is simple. Man of God, this and everything. The doctor said this and I stretched my dinner. Name Jesus. Wah, you vomit there. Is there anything dangerous? There's nothing dangerous. But there's one thing I want you to learn out of this simplicity. There is one thing I want you to learn from this simplicity. The secret of this simplicity. To those who pray, or let me put it this way, the person who prays must have the qualities that authorize his prayer, then the possibilities will be endless. I mean, unlimited. That's all. John 15, verse 7. Then I must say, the person who prays, the person who prays must have the qualities that authorizes his prayer. Then the possibilities will be endless. Read John 15, verse 7. John 15, verse 7. 
If you abide in me, if you abide in my in me, and my words abide in you, and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire. You will ask what you desire, and it shall be done for you. Thank you. That is the secret of the simplicity of our prayers, or the simplicity of the saints of old. Because the Bible says they were human beings just like us. David Ponyani is a human being just like you. But when he stretches his hand, anything can happen. But he's a human being just like you. What makes us different? The person who prays must have the qualities that authorize his prayer. Many times we pray, we don't have the qualities that warrants, authorize our prayers. Then we are wasting our time. Are you listening to me? Yes. Ask your neighbor, do you have the qualities that authorize what you are looking for? You need to check yourself. You are looking for private jet. Do you have the qualities that warrants the prayer for private jet? You want to stay, you want to drive a, 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 a what you call it, a, a Rolls Royce. Do you have the qualities that warrants the request of a Rolls Royce. Do you, you want to heal? Do you have the qualities that authorize the healing power? You want to redeem people? Do you have the qualities that authorize the power of redemption to take people out of the kingdom of darkness? And we keep praying, praying, you keep praying, you just pray, you just pray. You never, you never check the qualities. That is why we pray. Our prayer not answered are answered. Because many times, the thing we pray for, we have no qualities that authorize that specific request. We have no qualities. Anyone who pray can pray for anything because God has promised to give us anything in John 15 verse 7. He says, whatsoever, whatever you desire, but before whatever you desire, the condition is if you abide in my word and my word abide in you. Yes. Tell never say a person who pray, anyone who pray, can pray for anything, because God has promised to give us anything, but with a condition. John fifteen verse seven: If you abide in my words, and my words abide in you, that is, if you are rooted in the scriptures, and the scriptures are rooted in you, ask what you wish; it shall be given. If we limit God in asking, God will be limited in his giving. I repeat again. I say if we limit God in our asking, God will also be limited in his giving. If we limit ourselves by obeying some of the scriptures and disobeying some, God will also be limited in fulfilling some of the scriptures and denying us in fulfilling some of the scriptures. The ball is in your court. Luke 6, 38, it says, with the same measure you use, it will be measured back to you. Matthew 7, verse 2 to 3, the same way you judge others, so you'll be judged. 
if we limit ourselves by obeying some of the scriptures, God will also be limited in fulfilling all of his promises. You'll be selecting some. Because with the same measure you use, it's measured back to you. The same way you give, it will be measured back to you. The same way you judge others, so you'll be judged. Tell her never say, stop limiting God. That is all. Stop limiting God. God's power and authority are not limited by space or time. His power and majesty are incontestable, are meshless. No power of hell can match his power and authority. The measure, the level, the size, I mean the degree of our prayer and faith to God is the measure, is the level, the size or the degree of his answer to our prayer. God's spirit, or God will release his spirit to the level, to the degree, to the measure we stand in honor in reference of his word is the level he also releases the level of his spirit. God's blessings in our lives will be released to the same level, the same measure, the same size. We obey the scriptures. That's all. If you want all of God's blessings, you must obey all of his commands. If you want some of God's blessings, you must obey some of his commands. It's simple. God is faithful. To his faithful followers. <laughs> Tell your neighbor, say, if you want all of God's blessings... You must obey all of his commands. If you just want some of his blessings, you must also obey some of his commands. God is faithful to his faithful followers. That is all. You are jumping, you move from this church, you come to this church. No, no, it's so simple. If you want all of his blessings, obey all of his commands. If you want some, obey some, you give some. God is faithful. He said, just God. With the same measure you use, Luke 6, 38, it will be measured back to you. That is all. God measures the answer to our prayer according to the size, the measure of our faith and prayer in him. S is the size, the measure, the degree of our asking. So is the size, the measure, the degree of the answer. Turn about say S is the size, the measure, the level of your asking. So is the size. So it will be the size, the measure, the degree of the answer you receive.
That is all. God is limited by our practice of prayer. He's limited by the law of our prayer. In the giving of the answer. Yes. I know you are asking how, how come, how so? You say how come, I say how so. Luke 18, verse 7 to 8, read. Luke 18, verse 7. Even he rendered a just decision in the end. So don't you think God will surely give justice to his chosen people who cry out to him day and night? Yeah. So this means some of us, we cry in the day, we don't cry in the night. Some of us, we cry in the night, but we don't cry in the day. In the day, we are busy doing business. S is the measure, the size, the level of your prayer. So will it be the size, the measure, the level of the answer. There are people who cry day and night. There are those who don't cry at all to God. There are those who only cry in the day and they don't cry in the night. And we have those who cry only in the night, but they don't cry in the day. With the same measure you use prayer, it will be measured back to you. Stop limiting God. Tell us say, stop limiting God. With the same measure of your commitment, same measure of your prayer, so will be the measure to your answer. You pray less, you want big things. You pray small, you want big things. God will give you according to the measure you use. You obey some, God gives you some. You obey all, God gives you all. I don't want you to die. And the day you die, when the spirit has come out of your body, you begin to realize when you will see everything with the best eye view. You see everything like this. This is what you call best eye view. Where you hear even people that are in Johannesburg, in North America, you hear them. When the spirit come out, that real you now surface. That is where you want to realize that you have been doing small in your life. That will be very late. That, that will be very late. But everybody will realize. When that your spirit come out, everything becomes best eye view. You see everything 360 degrees. You hear even your loved ones talking. Everybody in America, this, talking this and everything. Even those who are hearing that you are gone, they are crying, you hear, hey, oh my God, they are crying, but you can't talk to them because you, don't know, you no longer have a voice, voice, co voice, voice box, voice calls. They are gone. You wish you can, they can hear you. They can't hear you. Don't wait for that time to come to realize that I have been doing little during my lifetime. I prayed little. I gave little. I did everything little. I did some. I left some out. Don't wait for that time to come because it will be very late and that time is coming. I said that time is coming. That one is coming, whether you like it or not, whether you are a billionaire, trillionaire, you are a rich man, poor man, that time is coming. When you will look at your body on a bed or on the floor or on the road, on a car accident scene or in a hospital bed, and you look at yourself and say, oh my God, this is me. Oh my God, I'm dead. Nobody will hear you because you don't longer have a voice called. But you'll be talking, oh my God, I'm gone. Hey! You listen to them when they're declaring you, telling, please, family, we are very sorry. You'll be watching them. Hey, I'm here. They don't hear you. you, you everything is 
with a bird's eye view. When you look to, you, each time your thought will just be looking, there's no neck now. Each thing you think of, you see before you go, finally. Now, let me ask you a question. Whom do you trust with the keys of your bedroom? Whom do you trust with the keys to your safe house where you store your money, your important things? Whom do you trust with the pin code of your bank? Definitely, it should be someone who has been with you for some time, and the person has proven himself or herself to be trustworthy. These are the people you give. Or you, everybody enter your bedroom. Everybody just open your bedroom just like that. They are just inside. They just open your safe. They know the keys, where the key are. Even if you are not here, they just go, anybody. No, it must be somebody you trust who has proven themselves to be. What did God say to Peter? He says, I give you the keys of the kingdom. Whatever you bind, Matthew 16, whatever you bind shall be bound. Whatever you bind here on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose here on earth shall be loosed in heaven. These are the keys of the kingdom. Finally, I want to say to you, to those who have made prayer that is their relationship with God, their main business. And have committed more time to their relationship with him. According to this high estimate, According to the high estimate of its importance, God will give them the keys of the kingdom of God. And he will work through them wonders in their lifetime here on earth. That is what you should know. To those who have made prayer, I mean their relationship with God, their main business, and they've committed more time to it from day to day. According to the high estimate of its importance, God will commit to them the keys of the kingdom of God. And he will work wonders through them through their lifetime. That is all. Let us rise up. Stop limiting God.